Lesson 66, Travesty of Justice. In today's lesson, we shall consider how Jesus was betrayed and arrested unjustly. We shall also consider the Lord's Supper, which our Lord has provided as a memorial meal until he returns for his people. While the chief priests arrested Jesus with the pretense of serving justice, they were in fact paying bribes and working under the cloak of darkness to hide their true and evil intentions to kill Jesus. This chapter begins with Judas bargaining with the Jewish authorities to hand over Jesus when he is away from the crowds. It was important to the authorities to address Jesus secretly so that people would not revolt against their evil plot to kill Jesus. Judas was just the answer they were looking for and he was glad to lead them to the place they could find Jesus. The Lord asked some of his disciples to arrange for the Passover feast in an upper room. After the Passover meal, Jesus instituted what we commonly call the Lord's Supper. This simple meal involved only two things, bread and wine, which represents his body and his blood. The bread and wine are merely symbolic and help us to remember that Jesus gave his body and life upon the cross for us and how he put away our sins. It is Jesus' command and wish that wherever his disciples are found, they would regularly celebrate this simple memorial until he returns for his church. Every Christian should therefore be glad and very honored to participate in this meal to honor the name and work of Jesus. While they were meeting in the upper room, Judas had in his heart to betray Jesus. Jesus knew what was in Judas' heart and told his disciples that one of them would betray him. They were wondering who could do such a thing and then began to dispute among themselves who of them was the greatest. Jesus then uses this occasion to teach them that in his kingdom the greatest is the servant not the one being served. He also added that his disciples would one day rule in his kingdom over the twelve tribes of Israel. Jesus then tells Peter that Satan would cause him to deny knowing Jesus, but after Peter had failed and was later restored, Peter should strengthen his brothers. Peter claims his loyalty to Jesus and that he would never deny him, but Jesus then tells him that he would deny him three times before the rooster crowed. After the dinner was ended, Jesus and his disciples leave Jerusalem and climb the Mount of Olives, where Jesus asked his disciples to watch and pray. Jesus then goes a bit farther and begins to pray earnestly and in agony. His prayer is so intense that his sweat was like great drops of blood. When he returns from praying, he finds his disciples asleep for they were tired. Then Judas arrived with the soldiers and servants of the high priest to arrest Jesus. Judas identified Jesus to the band of soldiers by greeting him with a kiss. One of Jesus' disciples attacks with a sword and manages to cut off the ear of the high priest's servant. Jesus stops the attack and then heals the man's ear. Then the soldiers bound Jesus and led him away, and the disciples all fled. Peter followed in the distance to see what would happen to Jesus, and he enters into the courtyard of the high priest's house, where Jesus was being held. As Peter warmed himself by the fire, several of the people identified Peter as one of Jesus' disciples, but in fear Peter denied three times that he even knew the man. As soon as he denied knowing the Lord the third time, he heard the rooster crow and remembered the words of Jesus. He then went outside and wept bitterly. We have seen how Jesus knew about Judas' betrayal and about Peter's denial before they took place. He also knew of his coming arrest and crucifixion. It is remarkable that Jesus, who is surrounded by evil men who wanted to kill him, and even his closest companions, can betray and deny him, and would still be willing to go to the cross in love for our souls. We are so unworthy of his love and grace, 
And yet in spite of our sin and wickedness, Jesus came to die for us. If the Holy Spirit can teach us the true significance of Jesus' sacrifice for us, it will make us eternally grateful, and also those who are compelled to worship such a great Savior. The final scenes of this chapter show Jesus being mocked by men who arrested him, blindfolding him and striking him on the face, asking him to prophesy who struck him. It was cruel and unnecessary to treat an innocent man in such a despicable manner. When brought before the high priest early in the morning, he questioned Jesus about his identity and whether he was the Son of God. Jesus confirmed that he was the Son of God, and this infuriated them and gave them what they desired, a charge of blasphemy. They did not believe Jesus was God's Son, and so his claim to be the Son of God, in their view, was blasphemy. It never seemed to occur to any of them that perhaps Jesus was indeed the Son of God, and that he had clearly shown this through his miracles, teachings, and by fulfilling many prophecies. These men, however, were not interested in truth, only that they must get rid of Jesus because he was a threat to their status and reputation. Ironically, their travesty of justice was the means God used to bring about salvation to the world. While men meant it for evil, God meant it for good. And you may have peace with God today if you will accept Jesus as your Savior. Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will but yours be done. Luke chapter 22 verse 43